Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bob and Tom with the Post War Show. We're going to be covering the end of World War II as it happens. Yes, Bob, this has been a very eventful period of history. A lot of devastation has occurred in Europe, and many people have suffered. But because of the United States' involvement in the war, this has a guaranteed victory for the Allies, as they are giving heavy opposition against the Axis powers. All right, our top generals in war analysis are certain that the end of the war is imminent. We are waiting for the word of our guaranteed victory from our men in Europe. We have our reporter overseas in Italy ready to give us a first-hand account of, what the, of the closing war. Okay, over to you, Phil. What's it look like out there? Spain's aero bombardment had badly damaged most major cities and industrial facilities have been especially hit. Many of the continent's greatest cities, including Warsaw, London, and Berlin, currently lay in ruins. Millions are homeless, and due to the devastation of agriculture, near starvation has hit many parts of the continent. Transportation infrastructure has been compromised due to highly targeted airstrikes. Hey Phil, can you give us any insight into how the harsh winter last year may have affected the condition of our troops over there? Well Tom, the harsh winter of 1946 has not only affected the troops, but the millions of homeless and the agriculture of many European countries. Hey Phil, how do you think the war has affected the economy over there? Well, because the war has damaged infrastructure and transportation, each country's economy has, t has been left to fend for itself. Also take into account that each country has put so much money into the war effort that their treasuries have been left completely barren. Hey Phil, what does all of this mean for North America? How does this affect us, if it does at all? Well, neither the U.S. or Canada has been physically damaged by the war, but there is a possibility that Europe's damaged economy could lead to trading difficulties between the U.S. and its trading partners later on. In my opinion, I think that the U.S. should intervene in the economy if they don't want to have any economic downturn in the future. Any last words, Phil? Well, guys, I believe at the end of the war will... Gents, I've gathered you here to integrate a revolutionary plan. I knew that if I wanted to make this plan work, I needed William L. Clayton and George F. Kennan. So what's this plan? Well, Will already knows a little bit about it. Basically, I want to rebuild the entire European economy. That's suicide! Well, actually it's not. It's going to be quite simple. We just need to accomplish getting enough countries that agree to our plan. I already sent William to the Soviet Union to ask if they uh, want our aid. I asked him to wear a wire so we could hear the conversation. Let's listen in. Uh, here we go. Come on, come on, come on. Stupid communist. I am not interested in your blood. Be gone with you. William, what's going on in there? What's happening? Is everything all right? William, is everything all right? What happened to you? It went all right. I just don't think they're too, we're too interested. Well, too bad about that. I was really hoping they'd go for our plan. Here's what I think our next step should be then. Well, first, we should contact Greece and Turkey, since they were at the front lines and they got the brunt of the battles. Then we will move on to a more general outreach to the rest of Europe. Well, not to the communists, right? Well, there are some communist countries that need our help. But don't worry, this will end up helping us in the future. Alright, just leave this to me. They don't call me the planner because I make calendars. <laughs> Uh, so how are we going to go about organizing this? Well, if you hold on, George, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. First, we will send envoys from the Economic Cooperation Administration to each country that agrees to our aid. These people will be prominent businessmen who will act as advisors to aid in the financial process. Just leave that to me. Whoa, whoa, we don't need that. Don't worry. I already have some contacts for the job. These men will help the local governments properly divide the money 
to ensure it gets to its rightful place. So, I did the math, and I've calculated that about 13 billion dollars needs to be sent over. Now this will be primarily used so trade and commerce can continue. Just to be clear, we're not giving aid to the communists. No, William, we're giving money to the communists. By the way, I do know that later on this money will be used for reconstruction projects and military advancements, but we have to realize this is for the greater good, and this will allow these countries to rebuild their economies. We should consider, though, that before sending the money, we should send some staples, like food and water, and th this will help these countries get back up on their feet. So, any questions? We should just shut down the communists. No, William, we're not shutting down the communists. But you know what, just to make you happy, I'll add an unofficial act to my plan, where we keep tabs on the communist parties and make sure that they don't get too big. So, Herman Vanderwey, what do you think of my plan? Well, George Marshall, I think it will be a great success. Here's Wilhelm and Henry! Hi, I'm Wilhelm Rocky, and today we are talking about the Marshall Plan and its effects on our world economy. And I'm Henry Hazlitt. Did it do good or did it do bad? Alright, Henry, I'll start out this debate. By the end of 1952, when the funding had ended, the economies of the participant countries had risen by a whopping 35 percent, and Western Europe continued with this prosperity for the next couple decades. Yeah, Wilhelm, but you have to take into consideration that a lot of credit has been given to Ludwig Erhard, and the recovery of many European countries can be attributed to Erhard's policies. Erhard increased investments, established high saving rates, and lowered taxes. I mean, this guy played a big part in Europe's recovery. You know, there were a lot of countries, though, that were sent aid from the U.S. In fact, I have the list over here. Let me heave this thing up here. All right, the countries that received aid from U.S. Here we go. Austria, Belgium, Luxembourg, Denmark, France, Germany, Greece, Iceland, Ireland, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Sweden, Switzerland, Turkey, and the U.K. Henry, you know what? It, it can't be a coincidence that all the countries who received aid from the U.S., also happened to be the same countries that had long-term prosperity following the war. It had to do something with the Marshall Plan. But you also have to look at what the money was used for. Do you remember the analysis that Noam Chomsky gave? He brought out some good points that the American dollars sent to the Netherlands and France equaled the money used to finance their armies. The Netherlands even used part of their money to reconquer Indonesia in the Indonesian National Revolution. You have to take into consideration that even though the money was sent to help their economic recovery does not mean they used it for their economy. Alright Henry, time for thumbs up, thumbs down. Alright, I'll go first. Uh, after an examination of the facts, it is my personal opinion that this plan deserves a thumbs down. You know, it's nothing personal. You know, it was a good plan. It was smart in theory, but the truth of it is, is that the best way for Europe's economy to cover is by adopting a new market system. And unfortunately, the Marshall Plan involves keeping the already failing system. Yeah, I, I see your reasoning. I, too, give it a thumbs down. I believe that you make a better economy by saving money and creating a stable foundation rather than receiving large sums of money to be spent. All right. Now, while we both believe that there were better ways to save the European economy besides the Marshall Plan, it, we do have to admit that the Marshall Plan did work, it got the job done, and I think we all owe a lot to this plan. Was it actually the Marshall Plan that helped us? I think not, but in fact, we are living in a state of prosperity. So that's all for now, folks. Catch us later on our next episode.